Uh, hello, everyone. Um, my name is Nathaniel. I work a lot with the maps at the State Library here, um, and Margie is a systems librarian. Um, today, we're going to be talking about the History Pin Real Estate Maps project, and specifically um, our use of data in the project. Jacinta, um, who will be speaking a bit later, um, is also working on this project, and as are a number of other people in the organisation. So real estate maps are advertisements for land sub subdivisions. Um, they can be really useful uh, for researching things like house histories, uh, local history, land development, town planning, and they're incredibly pretty too, so graphic design, typography, that type of thing. Um, for um, our project was to pin um, 800 real estate maps from our collection to history pin. Um, so for us, um, the drivers are uh, geotagging the maps will increase their findability and um, using History Pin as the platform will introduce them to a new audience um, and also change the way that people can interact with the collection. Our data story starts with step one, uh, which was the data being exported from Alma, which is our library management system. Step two was uh, twiddling the data to work with History Pin's bulk uploader, uh, so getting the format of the data correct. And it was at this stage that we found uh, two problems and um, two solutions. So I'll talk about the first problem um, and Margie will talk about the second one. The first problem was that there were inconsistencies with our exported data. So um, particularly in the latitude longitude columns, which describe the location of the map, um, so the, um, the first uh, type or the first um, uh, type of data, how it was, um, uh, the first format rather, we had about 400 lines in that um, 800 line spreadsheet um, were in that one format. Um, the second type, there was approximately 250 um, in that format and um, there was the remaining 150 were a variety of different types of, um, of formats. So um, we needed to make them the same um, to work with them. So the solution for us was um, uh, manipulating the data uh, using OpenRefine, which is a, a tool um, uh, which will feature in the Library Carpentry workshops tomorrow. Um, and um, so I guess from, from our perspective, the first, really the first step was to make the data uniform and harmonious, you need to document the types of inconsistencies like we saw in the previous slide, and you need to plan an approach to it. So I'll just take you through the steps that I took um, for that uh, one column. So for the latitude column, the first step um, for it was to um, expand um, the data to isolate the inconsistencies in it. The second step was identifying and removing unwanted bits of the data. Uh, the third uh, step was a, a bit of kind of semi-manual work um, and OpenRefine does help with that. Uh, and the fourth step was merging the clean columns together again. Um, so we repeated the same steps with the longitude column um, and merged the two columns so that they work with the bulk uploaders require format, uh, which was latitude comma longitude. Um, and so that we could use that data in the bulk uploader. Um, Margie will talk now about the second um, problem that we had and then I'll finish off. Thanks, Nathaniel. Well, problem two was the history pin bulk uploader uses the file name as the match point for the metadata that you're going to load. Now, um, SLQ's file naming convention for maps has the file name derived from the control field, the 001 of the descriptive record, in which is, actually comes from the database of the library management system. So we've had three databases and two library management systems since um, map digitisation began. As you can see in the slide, the MMS ID number that's exported in the metadata from the current library management system is not what the file's named and you need the file name to get to the file path to get the file that you want to upload. So um, fortunately, Nathaniel and Jacinta thought to widen the conversation and see if they could collaborate with ICTS for a solution around this problem. And there was one, a programmatic one. It's still a work in progress. My colleague Darren from ICTS is on holiday in Europe at the moment, so but think of two people up here. Um, 
I brought the kind of knowledge of the data uh, history and the um, file naming convention changes and worked with Darren. We did come to a programmatic solution which gave Nathaniel 630 titles to work with. Okay, so um, with that, uh, with the data all in the right format, we could move to step three, which was using the bulk uploader um, and the end result. Um, so for our purposes, um, as of today, our first load was 70 maps. Um, we're currently waiting while HistoryPin released their new bulk uploader before adding the remaining maps. Um, and um, if you want to have a look at the collection, it is up 70 maps in there. Have a peek at it that way. And thank you very much um, for your time.